Hello, great to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Terrell. Oh, great to meet you, Terrell. My name is Terrell Owens, a uh, former NFL wide receiver. Yeah, I played in the National Football League for 15 years. If Tyler is a sports fan, that's probably uh, where he would notice me from. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, it. I'm excited. So I walk up to the door, and I didn't initially recognize who answered it. And then I realized it's Terrell Owens, who I was really surprised was sitting in front of me. I like to just explain basically what I go through in a reading and just kind of how it works. I just work as a clairvoyant, so I see information. As I kind of go through this process, I have this notepad and a pen, and all I do is I just scribble. And as I do this, I'll kind of pick up on stuff. Okay? Okay. All right, well, we'll see what we do. We'll see what I'm able to connect with. Tyler, you have your work cut out for you. There's a lot of skepticism with some things like this, so you just can't open your heart to any and everybody. Let's see what we can do. Okay. That's like I just got hit by a ton, so. I'm I know, gonna kinda... I probably, your meter reading is probably doing like, like this. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. No worries. Uh, okay, we have a grandmother figure that's coming through really, really strongly. One, do you know of any family members on mom's side who suffered a stroke? Uh, my grandmother. Okay, so that's where we'd see that connection. She was very influential in, in who I am today, and I think you know part of who I was on the football field was really adhering to what my grandmother taught me, and for him to really kind of feel that that connection, that, you know, he was onto something. She's making a connection to three boys, um, and they're three boys to her, who on some level took the role of like trying to help raise a child or like be there for a young person as they're growing up. So, who would the three boys be? I mean, I, I would say myself, her son, and then I have a I have a, a brother. Okay. A brother, so. Right, so that would be the three. I'm saying the geographical distance with this very, very clearly. So where did she actually physically pass away? Alabama. Alabama. So where were you at the time? California. Okay. Prior to her passing, you know, I had talked to my mom about her condition and as it progressively got worse. Um, so I went to go see her, then I left and came back out here and then. Uh, right. She passed. So she really wasn't conscious or talking or any of that when I did see her. So that was my lasting impression and, you know, my lasting uh, memories uh, of her. She's, <laughs> when she comes to she comes with a lot of energy. For her, she's acknowledging that there was discussions about her living situation before she died. And once she had the stroke, um, you know, obviously her health obviously deteriorated to the point that she couldn't take care of herself. And then obviously it progressively got worse. Um, and it came to a point of, you know, what do we do now? Sure. You know, what are those next steps, right. you know? And uh, my mom and my sister pretty much were the caregivers, but I got an update through my mom as far as her condition as it started to deteriorate. There was an emphasis on like, it's fine as it was. I understand the reasoning behind it, but she didn't want to be the type to just go and, you know, have people take care of her. She was pretty insistent that she was <laughs> right. going to do her own thing. Like, she wasn't upset about that. She acknowledges that she's aware that happened. And then she also acknowledges that she's not upset about the respirator because she had said that this is not something she wanted to have to survive off of. I know, and talking to my mom, yeah. you know, I don't think she particularly liked that, mm -hmm. you know, being that she didn't want her to suffer. And so, you know, it's that hard question for you to have to decide the fate of uh, someone's, your loved one's life. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And when she comes through, it's interesting because, like, she puts such a heavy emphasis on wanting to stay independent. She's the kind of person where in the event that, like, we were ever going to be like, okay, we got to take your license away, it's like, no. <laughs> right. She was put in an assisted living home, and then, you know, obviously she didn't walk as much. And then, you know, again, she was confined to a wheelchair. Um, things of that nature. For her, it was more important that she stay independent than anything else, right, and I that was significant. If I don't have my freedom, I don't have anything, because she she would never slow down. <laughs> I couldn't have described it any better. That was her. She was no nonsense. Uh, as I said, she was very blunt, stern. That was her. So now shifting gears, are there any other areas you'd like to focus on? Yeah, I have, uh, I, I yearn for that love life, something that I didn't experience growing up. I definitely want to find some stability. So let me think. One, four, and then one sec. Um, really not knowing how to be a boyfriend um, is something that um, I've kind of failed at. It's not something that 
um, I feel like I've had the best experience in, and I'm, a lot of that is really due largely to how I was raised, um, not having a dad in, in the household. So very, very interesting uh, trying to ask a 19-year-old the direction of a love life of myself. For whatever reason, the way this is coming across, there's a reference to a woman with a J name. With a J? With a J name. And J. that's definitely going to keep in mind. That'll be over the course of the next year. For just any woman you meet, be like, what's your name? And if it's not a J, walk in the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. But I love that's it. That's interesting. But keep your eyes peeled. J-Lo, perhaps? J-Lo, perhaps. I know, Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> I mean, exactly. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. Jesus, <laughs> that's the only J I probably need in my life right now is, is Jesus. But uh, J-Lo was the first thing uh, that came to mind. But hey, you never know. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, I man, really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank yes, you. absolutely. Appreciate you. Oh. How he described um, my grandmother, you know, that was kind of how she was. She kind of said what she had to say. But yeah, I mean, she he pretty much kind of described her to a T. And I think to be intuitive and, and, and kind of connect, you, you're kind of in awe. I'm a believer.